max value, the maximum rate of activity of that enzyme as well as the KM value, the Michaelis constant, is actually lowered in uncompetitive inhibition. Now, one major difference between uncompetitive and competitive is the fact that in this particular case, if we increase the substrate concentration, that will not actually affect that uh, activity of the enzyme. So uncompetitive inhibitors cannot be overcome by increasing the concentration of the substrate. And this is also true in a final type of inhibition known as non-competitive inhibition. So we saw that in competitive inhibition, that inhibitor binds onto the active side of that enzyme because of the resemblance in structure. We saw that in uncompetitive, the only time the inhibitor can bind onto that enzyme is when the substrate is actually bound onto the active side of that enzyme because only then will we create that pocket of space, the allosteric side, that the inhibitor can actually bind to. Now we see that in non-competitive inhibition, sometimes the enzymes will have that active side as well as that additional pocket that additional allosteric space regardless of whether or not that enzyme is actually bound onto that substrate inside the active site. So some enzymes have a permanent allosteric site that can bind inhibitors and these inhibitors are known as non-competitive inhibitors because they do not bind into the active site and so they do not actually compete for the active site with that substrate. And so these non-competitive inhibitors can bind to the enzyme regardless of whether or not the substrate is actually bound into the active site region. And this is shown in the following diagram. So we have the enzyme, this is the active site, this is our allosteric site to which the red um, inhibitor can actually bind to. So once we have this enzyme, if we have the substrate in close proximity and this is far away, the substrate will bind onto the active side to basically form this particular enzyme-substrate mixture. And then the enzyme-substrate complex, if no inhibitor is bound onto that allosteric site, this can basically catalyze the transformation of that substrate, the green molecule, into the product. And by the way, forgot to draw a product. So let's say that that green structure is transformed into this final molecule, which is our product. And this will only take place if no inhibitor is actually bound onto that allosteric site. Now, instead, we can also have this pathway that is followed. If this is in close proximity, it binds onto the allosteric site to form that enzyme inhibitor complex. But just because we form the enzyme inhibitor complex, that doesn't mean that the substrate will not be able to bind into the active site. In fact, the substrate usually does bind into the active site. But the problem is, once we form the enzyme substrate inhibitor, as in this particular case, that prevents that enzyme from actually catalyzing the transformation of that green substrate into this purple product. And so here, here, no reaction takes place. Now, if the inhibitor departs, then we form this enzyme substrate complex and only then can it go on to form that particular product. So, unlike in competitive inhibition and, and unlike in uncompetitive inhibition, in non-competitive inhibition, what the, binding of the, uh, what the binding of the inhibitor does is it lowers the turnover number of that enzyme, K-CAT. So remember, the K-CAT value, the turnover number, represents the number of substrate molecules that can be transformed into the product, num uh, the product molecules over some period of time by a single enzyme. And what this inhibition does is it decreases that turnover number. So essentially, the Vmax is lowered, the turnover number is lowered, but the Km value, the Michaelis constant value, actually doesn't change in non-competitive inhibition. And again, we'll talk about that in much more detail and why that actually takes place in the next lecture.
So again, reversible inhibition, the inhibitor binds onto that enzyme, but it binds relatively weakly. And what that means is the dissociation can take place very quickly under the proper conditions. And this is in contrast to irreversible inhibition. So in reversible inhibition, we have three types. We have competitive inhibition in which that inhibitor binds directly to the active side. We have uncompetitive inhibition in which the inhibitor binds onto that allosteric side that is formed only when that substrate is bound onto the active side of the enzyme. And finally, we have non-competitive inhibition in which that enzyme always contains an allosteric site. And so what that means is that inhibitor can bind onto that allosteric site of the enzyme regardless of whether or not that substrate is bound onto the active side of the enzyme. And finally, I guess I'll mention it briefly, we also have a fourth type of inhibition known as mixed inhibition. And in mixed inhibition, what that inhibitor does is it basically decreases the affinity of that active site for that substrate, and it also decreases the turnover number of that particular enzyme. This is known as mixed inhibition. It's a much more complex type of inhibition than either of these three forms of inhibition.